This time we're going to make a loft that fits our object completely. So think of this as if you were making a trim piece around the uh, top of a room, or if you were trying to fit a pipe object into the walls of a room, or around your tank objects, for instance. You'll recognize this object here. This was from our bridge tutorial. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap a, a, um, okay, optical illusion. <laughs> I'm going to wrap a pipe piece around the outside of this so it fits what is really a pretty complex shape. The way that I do that is I go to, I'm under Modify. This is an editable poly, which was left over from my bridging process. But it needs to be an editable poly at this point, or an editable mesh, but an editable something. And I need to be able to get a hold of the edges or the borders. But in this case, I'm going to use edges, because there are no borders. And if I select an edge, and I hit Loop or Ring, watch what happens. Ring will kind of go all the way around. Loop will go around this way. Now, I can never keep track of ring and loop, I guess. It's just me. But you might hit both to get go in the direction that you want. And this little button here in max 8 will kind of jump around the object. Now, in this case, because I made this from a bridge, what I'm going to have to do to get a hold of all the way around is I'm going to select a piece from each of these areas. See how if I put this sideways. I'm going to follow this all the way around. So I'm holding down control. I'm going to grab one of those. So holding down control here. Whoops. Hit undo. There we go. There we go. This will make sense what I'm doing in a second. There we go. And there we go. See how I've got a hold of each of these? And now if I hit loop, see how it's grabbed all the way around, except this one. I missed this one. Holding down control again. There we go. So I've made a complete outline around this object. Now, right now, that is just an edge. I can't loft an edge. I can only loft a shape. But there's this button under Edge, in Editable Poly, Edge, this great big guy here, Create Shape from Selection. That's what I want, because I want a shape. I'm going to hit that button, and it's going to ask me to call this something. I'll call it my Path01. I'm going to make it smooth. There we go. And now, if I unclick Edge, I have a path here. It's hard to see it until I move it out. Let me move this sideways and you'll see it. And here's my path. See that path? Now when I made that path, I had a choice of making it linear or smooth. I chose to make mine smooth. But you could have made it linear if you wanted it to fit exactly onto that surface. I'll show you how to do that again. Let's undo that. There we go. So once again, there we go. We've got are all our pieces in there. There we go. Okay, so I've got all my pieces. I go create shape from selection. I'll call this path 01, and this time I'll make it linear. And now it will fit my object perfectly. Remember, you got to click off the object and then click on the newly formed path because... It's a different object or a different piece. And I could slide this all the way back here if I wanted to at this point. See, it'll fit perfect. Now all I need is, if you remember, a shape. In this case, I'm going to make a... How about a rectangle? We haven't done that before. And I got a... What's a rectangle? I'm going to make a little rectangle here in my top viewport. So I'll make it about that big. 
There we go. You can see a little teeny rectangle. You don't want to drag it in the front viewport because then it's just going to loft the flat side of the rectangle around. You kind of have to line the rectangle up so that it's ready to go across this surface. And if you're not sure, you might try it in a few different viewports. Try to loft it and see what happens. There's only two different ways you can line it up, really. Three different ways, I guess. Okay, so now we've got this. If you remember, we need to select the path first. It works better that way. Go to... Whoops. Create, Geometry, Compound Objects, Loft, Get Shape. Click on that. See my little highlighted thing there? And now we've got a rectangle piece that goes perfectly around the objects. I can go under Skin Parameters. Let me fold some of these up so you can see it under skin parameters and I can play with the path steps I don't need these going this way because they're just they're cheating me out of a bunch of polygons and I really don't even need any going this way because it's a linear one and if it's linear you're going to use a lot less polygons which is good for our tank okay so now, if we want to make it bigger, you should know how to do that at this point. We go to Modify, Scale, and in this case, we would grab both of these and move them up. And it's going to get bigger. And that's from the last tutorial. So if I keep moving this up, it'll get bigger and bigger. And you can see that if I color this the same shape, or same color, and I render it, what I've ended up at doing is making a fairly complex object. Let me get a better view of that. Make it a little bit darker color. There we go. I've made a fairly complex object that fits my shape perfectly. Now, just in case you're thinking that you could have beveled that out after cutting in the segments, that's very true, but you can't do that with every object, and this uh, will make sure that every object has little pieces that fit just perfectly. So I could make something like pipes out of this. You could do all sorts of stuff. Um, if I go, I'm going to go to this button, which is going to allow me to pick what I want to select. I want the path in this case. I'm going to move the path back here. I'm going to go to my shapes again. In this case, I'm going to make a circle. There we go. I'm going to select my path. I'm going to loft this. So here, compound objects, loft, get shape. There we go. And I need more path shapes, obviously. That's down here. You can see that it makes a circle. So that looks good. And then I can even go to Modify, Deform, Deformations, Scale. And in this case, I'm going to add one here, one here, one here, one here. I'm going to grab these two in the middle, move them up and over. And what I'm going to end up with is like a pipe shape up here at the top. If you can see that, let me make this a little bit bigger. Grab these two, make them higher. See that path shape, that pipe shape up there at the top? I'm going to move these over. Until they're right centered on top, close. There. You can see the segments actually in our object are the dotted lines back here behind this. So what I'm doing is I'm centering it right here on these two lines. Can you see how those lines right there correspond with these two lines? And there's a bunch of lines over here, so that's with a bunch of lines over here. I'm going to move this over. Uh, probably right on top of that line. That's good. 
And then this guy is going to move over here and go right on that one. And now I've made um, some more modeling. And we've created some more complexity to our object. Okay? So that's how you get lofts to attach to shapes. It's a good way to make pipes on your tanks. It's a good way to make a lot of decoration. Trim pieces work really well. You can be creative in how you use it.